Yeah, we're back with another Highway 83 Suzuki YouTube video. What is going on today? We're talking about fuel pump failure, ECM failure. Which is it? You know, you're trying to start your rig, you're not getting any fuel going on. So, hey, we're going to show you how to look into that today. Uh, the 89 through 95 Sidekick Tracker, you may know, you may not know, very common for ECM failure. One of the symptoms, no power to the fuel pump. You know what I'm talking about? So this is how you're gonna diagnose it. First to see if your fuel pump's running. You're gonna turn the key to the on position right before, right before it starts cranking over, turn it to the on position, get out, sprint down here, get, ah, get your ear up in there and you'll hear the humming. The gas, or the fuel pump's gonna pressurize the system for three or four seconds. So you hear a humming. If you don't hear that, your fuel pump's not getting any power. So you could have a relay issue, ECM issue, faulty wiring issue, and now we're gonna go through what I would do immediately, it happens a lot. So um, the fuel pump wiring starts at the computer, which is underneath the dashboard, driver's side, right where your left knee would be. The wiring goes from there, it's gonna be a pink wire with a black tracer running through the rocker panel, up and in here, and the, the, the connection that I like to test first is right behind the brake light. Now, if your rocker panels are rusted, you know you know some of your rockers are rusted. And right down here, I can feel a little rust down here. Um, you're gonna have splashing water get in behind here, and that's gonna make this connection all corroded, green, nasty stuff going on. So I like to test that first. And first, we can just do a visual. We're gonna pull out our two Phillips head screws, which are already gone. Pop your tail light out, let her dangle down in there, you know, or unplug it, but we don't give we don't give a crap over at 83. Ah yeah. So now this is the connection that I'm talking about. You can see the pink wire black tracer right there, and the pink wire's up here. So we're gonna unconnect this. Now a lot of times you'll see all kinds of corrosion, green crusties in here or in here. So if that's the case, you gotta clean all that up dielectric grease plug it back in see if see if it fires up but what we're gonna do is we're gonna test power right at this plug to see if we're getting power to here if we're getting power to here then we move down the line to the next plug test that and so forth so what we got going on right now I've got I had this rigged up before the video to speed things up I've got my multimeter here trusty handy dandy we're gonna set her to, to volts 20, 20 volts or below we got her set up to. I've got the ground wire behind this Phillips head screw. So we're grounded. We're grounded back there. So you got to pick somewhere to ground your multimeter. And then we're going to take our positive and we're going to make a connection into the pink wire with the black tracer. We're going to set the multimeter here. Now I have to go run up to the front while the wonderful camera woman I'll get, a, get a little bit of that action in there too. Ah, yeah. so I'm going to go turn the key and we're going to see if we get power movement on there. Okay, power jumped up. Now three seconds, power jumped back down. Ah, yeah. Now we know we got power to this outlet. So that's, that's a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you, how you want to look at it. Because if you weren't getting any power... It could be the computer, which is much easier to, to take out than the gas tank and the fuel pump. But it is what it is. So we got power to there. So now this wire runs down and along behind the bumper, and there's going to be an outlet that comes out on top of your fuel pump. That's going to be this bad mammer jammer. So this, this guy dangles down right up where all the rusty salt and mud and everything. So then we're going to unplug this. We're going to multimeter this. And if you're getting power here, then you probably have a bad fuel pump. You're not getting power to the actual pump. The pump burnt out. Or you're getting power, but the pump's burnt out. This also gets crusty. Um, so this could be a bad connection. Sometimes you just got to clean this connection or snip these off and plug the wires in together. Sometimes the wires get rusty. Well, here, let me break one out for you. Look at this rusty, bad mammal. Look at this. This thing's disgusting. But I've seen worse. I've seen worse. Sometimes the wires break off right off the top here, and then you need to clean this up and solder it and put it back on and you'll be back in business. Um, but in this case, 
the pump was bad. I took the whole shebang down. I got my new pump in. I was gonna make a video on doing all that, but this turned into a, a shit show, Wisconsin shit show. Uh, broke off several bolts holding the gas tank on and uh, things got a little carried away. It was too in-depth for a video. So we'll get you on, we'll do a whole fuel uh, pump, fuel tank drop and everything in a different video. We gotta get this puppy together before winter, you know what I'm saying? So, so we got this down. We swapped in our new pump. So that's how you're gonna test the wiring going to the pump. And then while we're at it, I'm gonna show you, I get this almost every day. This, this thing right here, this connection, this threaded to the fuel filter. People are like, dude, do you have this thing? And I'm like, no, don't got it. They all get rusty and you, you can't find this part. So what I tell people to do what I've done, when I take them apart, I've seen other guys do it. It's no secret, but if you're a tracker guy, I mean, you, you're, doing, you're doing crazy stuff like this all the time. So what I like to do, if I don't have the right parts, normally I save one or two for myself, but what I would do here, so let's say this is super rusty like this, you're not gonna get this thread out, it's just gonna break, or a lot of times you're just pissing fuel out right here. I've been stranded because pissing fuel out, it's squirting everywhere. You look on top of the gas tank, you can see it. You're like, oh, damn, dude. So what I would do here, since this is the threaded part, you can cut right here, cut the end off. Cut your threads off. So now all you got is a piece of, piece of metal, piece of metal piping, and then you're gonna take and cut the rubber right here. So now you, this whole center section, get out of here. Now you're gonna take this hose, slip it over here, and use a high pressure fuel clamp for fuel injection vehicles, and clamp it down right there, and you're done. So that's what I would do. Um, you should still have enough length on this hose to make the connection back to the fuel filter. Now, if you don't, you can take any, any fuel hose and slide it over there, clamp it down, and then you could either cut this and put a, put a splicer piece, piece of metal in here, and then you can save your connection here. But let's say you're rusted up here. Now what you can do is you can make the cut here, put on your fuel holes so that you're just running regular fuel holes with clamps. And if you go to the parts store, and say, hey man, check it out. I got this fuel filter. It's threaded on both ends. Let me see what else you got. Now they're gonna have other fuel filters that have a nipple on it. So it's just a nipple sticking out just like this. So then the, this nipple will be sticking out of one side of your fuel filter. And then you can simply slide a hose on and clamp it down and you're done. You're skipping all this rusty threaded crap. Um, that's very simple. I tell a lot of guys to do it and they're like, I, why didn't I think of that? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, because you're overthinking it and uh, it is what it is. Another thing you could do, let's say you wanted to save, you wanted to save the threaded part for whatever reason, you just don't want to damage your, your fuel pump hanger. You could get um, a fitting, a fuel fitting like this and you can thread this guy in and then you can cut your Cut your pipe here and slide over your fuel, your fuel uh, rubber fuel holes here. That's for whatever reason, if you want to save that. So again, you walk into your auto parts store and say, hey man, let me see what you got. Let me get in the back. Let me jump around where you guys play around. Let me see everything you got and I'm gonna start fitting stuff and making it happen. So that's a very easy fix for the common rusted out thing. And like I said, this is normally better up here to, uh, to go into your fuel filter. But if it's not, they have other fuel filters, the same size, same shape, threaded on one end, nipple on the other end where you can just slide over your fuel hose and life is good. So that's a quick fix for that. Um, and then the fuel pump, like I said, if you wanna test back here, check for power and then check for power at this and check all these connections. A lot of times they're just bad corroded wires and you can be back up and running on this. You, you can do it on the side of the road. Just check those plugs, clean them up, put them back in. Um, we're gonna do another video showing the computer, the ECM computer. I'm gonna show you more on how to diagnose that, how to fix it. Super easy, super cheap. Fix those leaky capacitors in there. Get your computer fixed up. But especially you rusty guys chilling up north, drinking beer on frozen lakes like me, your trucks get rusty. You're gonna have fuel issues on top of the tank. So that's what we're all about doing today. 
Um, let me see if I'm forgetting anything. I think we covered all the bases on the fuel pump. Um, oh yeah, forgetting to take a drink of beer, eh? Too much talking, not enough beer drinking, getting ready for Wisconsin fall. People are deer hunting around here and they're samurais, like, ah, yeah, man, hauling, hauling deer around and stuff. I'm getting ready for ice fishing. So, we got more videos coming. Um, get ready for them. Subscribe to us, check us out, buy some parts off our website, highway83suzuki.com, baby. So, we got other videos coming right here and here. Subscribe to our channel. And uh, let's keep her rolling, guys. Ah, yeah, Miller highlight, baby. Check out that highlight on the back.